Hey yo, what is going on everybody? It's your boy X coming at y'all with a brand new video. And in this video, we are going to be doing the way too early dark matter tier list. So if you guys are excited, make sure you guys smash the like button down below as well as comment as we get on throughout the video. What you guys think of it, where you'd move some players and all that wonderful stuff. Now I wanted to, um, I guess take a minute to talk about and put that in the middle because that was really tilting me. But talk about why um, some of these cards are going to be in the places that they are going to be. Uh, remember, these are dark matters. These are some of the best cards in the game. So it's really about some very, very small differences in a lot of these cards that is going to, I guess, change them. So beware of that. It's very tiny differences in some of these cards. And again, I wanted to make it obvious, like top 50 cards, top 25 cards, top 10 to 20 cards, top 10 cards, and top 3 to 5 cards. Uh, that should be 1 to 3 cards. Uh, low key. Uh, it should be like top 5 plus will do. <laughs> top 5 plus cards in that top one. Because all of these cards are absolutely insane. They're definitely in the top 50. And we're kind of just ranking them, uh, I guess, minimally. So starting off in our uh, top 50 list, we'll have Dark Matter Taco full now taco full is obviously a great card he's really cheesy but the thing is and why i ranked him down is like the worst dark matter i guess we'll call it is the fact that you really need to rely on like other boosts for this taco full to be amazing and as a base card he's not exactly um amazing i guess we'll say um we have to throw on you know phil jackson and the kobe shoe you have to add a lot of badges to him and once you do i definitely think you can make uh, an argument that he's like a top 10 to 20 card maybe even a top 10 card but I didn't like the fact that of ranking a Dark Matter up that high because of needing all of that stuff. I don't know. It, just, it feels a little bit wrong to me. If you wanted to make your speculation and put Taco Fall up that high, I could understand why you do it. But I'm going to stick with this and kind of leave it as is. Because, again, you're going to have to add, you know, range extender, flexible release, um, you know, difficult shots, a quick first step downhill things like that taco fall it's, it's a lot to do for a card if you get him out of the top uh, the glitch market i definitely recommend doing it but until then um i would hold off all right i guess you wouldn't need to do it anyway and starting off the seats here we do have a galaxy opal mel daniels now mel, mel daniels is a pretty interesting card because obviously he evos up to a dark matter he's not one of the uh, i guess normal dark matters that comes in but if you do include Mel Daniels and you go by like total stats, I think he's like number four, maybe, uh, for the lowest amount of total stats, actually, which is pretty interesting. And he's um, decent in there when it comes to badges, which is pretty nice. Mel Daniels has a nice jumper, you know, with jump shot 81 on quick. It's cool. He doesn't really have the cheesy dribbles or anything like that. Uh, but he does have some really good badges across the board. He looks like a really good card. But when I was looking at it, there was a lot of, you know, center power forward combinations that were above him that I just liked a little bit better. And if you actually look at a lot of the dark matters, I understand that uh, Mel Daniels is amazing. But we do have three guys, well, four including Mel Daniels that can play the center position and a bunch that can play the power forward position as well, which is pretty tough. And there's a few of them that I just thought were a little bit better. So sadly, Mel Daniels had to sit there in the top 25. But he's still great, and he's basically a free Dark Matter for a lot of people, which is awesome, and I'm still working my way to get him. Next up is the Dark Matter Derek Rose. It's kind of another um, situation where I compared a lot of the PGs um, that we have right now, including secondary position, and including Derek Rose, we have five cards that can play the PG position, and I just thought that Derek Rose was the worst PG Dark Matter out of all of them, but still obviously is a top 25 card. Derrick Rose is obviously going to be great. It's Derrick Rose. His jumper's money, but he is six foot three. although he's a dark matter. And the thing that actually, I guess, put Derrick Rose below a lot of the other guys is his 75 interior defense. A lot of the other guys that can play PG have an amazing interior defense along with all of the other great things. And when you're dealing with a lot of cards like, I guess, we are, that are so good, you have to nitpick those tiny little differences in the cards because obviously all of these if we were doing a normal tier list, would probably be up in the S tier. But Derrick Rose, I'm going to throw into that top 25 section because I think he's great. But there's definitely a few things you can improve upon uh, for him, which is um, crazy to say about some dark matters. Uh, next up, we do have the top 10 to 20 cards where we are starting with Pistol Pete Maravich, which was a really, really hard one for me to rank because Pistol Pete is actually kind of disgusting. 
and by kind of i mean he's disgusting um he's a really hard card to get you have to actually redeem all of the galaxy opals which i think technically is only um three i'm pretty sure and then you also need to spend 1,000 tokens in order to get Pistol Pete Maravich. I am nowhere near that. I have 1,000 to tokens in total to my name without the Dark Matter, so or without the Galaxy Opals even being redeemed, so it's a little bit tough. But 6 foot 5 PG with a 6 8 wingspan. He has that Ray Allen base, which is the same, obviously, as a Kawhi Leonard. The quick dribble style and the Pro 2 in the beginning of the year. Pink Diamond Pistol Pete was absolutely insane, and this Dark Matter follows up. Um, even has some seriously good defense to back with it. Obviously, some great shooting and a jumper that I absolutely love. Playmaking is godly, and his finishing is also absolutely insane. Kind of out of this world. Um, and overall, I just really like this Pistol Pete card. I think he is absolutely insane. Um, but it was kind of crazy that there were some PGs that were better than him. But I just have him as a slight step above, you know, Derrick Rose. If we were to call Derrick Rose like 23, um, for example, just a random number, um, and I'd say Pistol Pete's like 1920 in top cards. It's kind of um, crazy for that. Uh, next up, we do have the Dark Matter DeMar DeRozan, and this is kind of one where I can understand it being a little bit controversial uh, for a lot of people because you're between Tracy McGrady and DeMar DeRozan for that kind of like spot, and it can be pretty difficult if I do say so myself because I did debate this for a while between DeMar DeRozan and Tracy McGrady. But when looking at it, Tracy McGrady does have a little bit of a higher total stats. We have some pretty big differences, I would say. You know, we have a higher perimeter defense. We have some higher lateral quickness, a better steal, better block, slightly lower interior, but better speeds, which is really good. A better three-point shot up to a 98, and we have better playmaking in general. Uh, DeMar really only catches up in stats because of his 38 extra in shot IQ, which is a worthless stat that they just boosted on DeMar for no reason. T-Mac also has a longer wingspan, is slightly taller as well, which is awesome. Um, but then when it comes to badges, they kind of like tit for tat. They trade some things off, like DeMar has two extra shooting Hall of Fame badges, but then, you know, Tracy McGrady has, um, you know, Steady instead, so he's better on next gen. He has two extra finishing badges. DeMar has some extra playmaking ones, uh, but T-Mac has some better defensive ones. It's kind of like a, a trade-off for who you like a little bit better, but the selling point for me and why I put DeMar DeRozan down here in the top 20 cards, and you'll see um, Tracy McGrady later on, I'll give you a hint up here, is because DeMar DeRozan doesn't have great defensive tendencies. We have a 90 on ball steal, but our contest shot's only a 72, our block shot only a 39, and he has a good block, so that'd be kind of nice to have it. So it was pretty tough, plus I don't know that it's just the defense i think that was really holding him back and again when we're comparing some really really top tier cards like this it's something that i'm gonna have to take into consideration those small tiny differences but demar is still an amazing card he's still super fun i tried about myself when he was an absolute demon but definitely more suited towards a current gen play style and obviously i'm a next gen player next up we have a galaxy opal michael jordan who i think is one of the first michael jordans in a while to actually be pretty goddamn decent uh, six foot six at the two is great. Six eleven wingspan again is awesome, and you're going to be using one of the best finishers and defenders in the entire game. Period, which is great. You also have the pro two, so the curry slide and the Michael Jordan jumper on quick, which is amazing. Great finishing and defensive tendencies, the things that matter. But the thing that's a little bit tough is the slasher dribble style, which is why I didn't move Jordan up a little bit higher. Again, when you're comparing a lot of these cards, things like that matter. Like Demar has the shifty, and I'd argue Demar probably is going to be a better card than MJ. Just because of that shifty dribble style, it's going to give you a lot more speed boost and just great things in general, um, which really helps you out. Jordan is still a great card. Hall of Fame range and all of the amazing defense that he brings is awesome. But I still think he's only in this like top 10 to 20 card consideration. And I do want to say I will not be ranking the heroes and the non-hero version. Uh, the heroes are obviously better, so we're just going to rank those. The only difference is one Hall of Fame badge, gold, two Hall of Fame. So there's no point. Uh, next up, we have Dark Matter Kobe Bryant, who did drop in the most recent set. And uh, Kobe Bryant is just obviously amazing. It's Kobe. Every single year, Kobe's going to be one of the best cards whenever he drops at his position. Um, I hate that they made him a point guard power forward because, obviously, it'd be great to run Kobe at the two. But we're not running with the PG anyway. Um, things you're getting with Kobe is obviously some godly shooting, some amazing finishing, and some really, really solid all-around defense, including an 85 interior, which is a huge step up from like a Derrick Rose we were talking about. I don't love that we have the Kobe Bryant dribble style, which is why he's only in here at that 10 to 20 card range. But 
The uh, Kobe Bryant being an amazing jumper, especially on quick with that Curry slide is obviously great. The tendencies are all looking absolutely godly. And the only things I think you could nitpick is that he doesn't have like a high standing dunk, which some other cards do. But again, that dribble style is kind of something that really hurts him because I know some people may not think it's that big. But when you compare like a Kobe Bryant, for example, to the shiftier quick, it's a definite uh, big difference between how the courts play, which is kind of crazy. And last but not least, into our 10 to 20 card range, we have Dark Matter Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett is a great card. He feels super smooth. He's super nice. But um, a lot of people have to understand that not many people like his jumper. Um, I know on current gen, set shot 14, especially on quick even, just isn't that great. On next gen, I like it. I think it's a smooth jumper. I think it's nice. And Dar Garnett is going to be one of the best all-around defenders you're going to have in the entire game, as well as one of the best finishers and post guys in the game. But is he going to give you that super cheesy like dribbling and all that sort of stuff, which some people want, especially out of the power forward, small forward, which is our power forward center, which is a little bit tough at this point. But um, the main reason that he got brought down to here is because I know a lot of people aren't a fan of that jumper. Personally, I like it, but that's a little bit of bias. So I didn't want to like factor it in and put him up here. Um, if you want to move him higher, that's cool. Again, for most of these cards, if you want to move him higher, I can understand it. But I think I did at least a decent job of ranking them uh, here. Starting off the A tier, we have a Dark Matter Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who made it into the top 10 just because I think there's one center that's just a little bit better. So I put him, the one center, up into S tier. Um, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, also, I didn't like the fact that his base card doesn't have range, and that's kind of where I ranked it. I know some people are going to completely ignore that and pretend like it's not even a thing, and just you know consider Kareem with all the badge diversion, but I'm talking about the base cards as they are. Um, Kareem can speed boost. He's stupid quick. He has a pretty good three-point shot of an 81, and his defense all around is absolutely amazing. Quick first step on a center his size is beautiful, but he's not getting any form of range, and their centers now that are getting Hall of Fame range can do all of the same things that Kareem Abdul-Jabbar can with, for sure, slightly worse jumpers, but coming with patches like that, especially Hall of Fame range, it's a big boost to them. Uh, because once you get Kareem Abdul Jabbar, you have to, you know, throw a sniper on him. If you're on next gen, you throw blinders, deep threes, dead eyes, and things like that. And then you'll finally get a Kareem Abdul Jabbar, which I would consider to be up in that like S tier, top five plus cards for sure. But I think without it, I'm going to leave him in here at the uh, top 10 cards. Sorry. For anybody that is a wonderful Kareem Abdul Jabbar fan. Uh, next up, we have a Dark Matter J.R. Smith who I consider to be better than Pistol Pete, Kobe, and Derrick Rose at the PG position, and that's why we threw him up here. Plus, I love the fact that he is a shooting guard secondary, unlike some other people. Kobe, doesn't make sense. But either way, <laughs> uh, J.R. Smith is absolutely insane. I mean, you have Jump Shot 49, which is a jumper that has stupidly grown on me with that quick um, release timing. The Athletic 3 leaner is pretty nice. The quick dribble style and the curry slide is obviously amazing, but... This is definitely a bit of a next-gen card coming with Hall of Fame blinders, but already has amazing defense, has amazing playmaking, which I absolutely love, and the tendencies on him are beautiful. 95 on-ball steal, 95 contest shot, 95 pass interception, and an 85 block shot is amazing, and he's going to be one of the best cards you could possibly use. Again, I've said it all for a while. I would love for Jump Shot 49 to get boosted up to the very quick timing, but even on quick, I still think we can put JR up here in this tier. Next up, we have Tracy McGrady, who I view is just a little bit better than Damar. I kind of talked about this already. Just has more stats, um, some better badges, some worse badges than Damar, but the defensive tendencies are absolutely out of this world, and he's great. Uh, it's, again, a bit of a difference between if you're playing on current gen, where Damar is better, or next gen, where T-Mac is better. But for me, I'm on next gen, and Tracy McGrady is definitely the clear favorite on next gen when it comes to these two cards. It's not even really close, because Blinders is a next-level badge. Uh, next up is... Dark Matter, Grant Hill at the PG position, who some people have called basically the best, I guess, card in the game, or best PG in the game at this point. Um, I'm going to keep it with PG. I don't think it's the best card, um, just because. But Jump Shot 1, which is usually the downfall of Grant Hill, gets put on the very quick timing, and then it becomes absolutely insane. Then you have the quick dribble style in the curry slide as well. And the main selling point to this Grant Hill is the fact that he is one of the best defenders in the game all around, has a 98 speed at 6'8 at the PG position, and is one of the best slashers you could possibly find in your entire life, while still being an absolutely amazing shooter, and having some of the best tendencies you could probably find on a card. The thing that uh, made me put Grant Hill into this like top 10 card section, even though he probably is like a top 5 card, 
is I just thought that the two guys that we have up in S tier, which I'll show you in a second, were just a good bit better than them, so I wanted to kind of separate a little bit. And that's being Zion Williamson, who I still consider to be the best card in the entire game, because Dark Matter Zion is kind of just another level. Um, Dark Matter Zion, if you go and look, I'm pretty sure still has the highest total stats like in the entire game, which is absolutely insane. Obviously, his um, normal card is also tied with that. Then when it comes to total badges, Zion Williamson has lost his number one spot, but is in the third, which is still pretty good. He's lost that. Um, actually, no, he's still tied for second because Danny Ferry has 67. So does Zion, who has 67. He just lost his spot to Kevin Durant, who has 69 which is a little bit tough, but a six foot six power forward, small forward when he's this good is absolutely insane because you guys know if you've used a Zion card, he's one of the best rebounders, period, in the game. Then almost every single stat is above a 90. Actually, if it matters, it's above a 90. <laughs> the things that aren't are like shot IQ, passing vision, and intangibles, which we don't anyway. Some of the best tendencies you could possibly have on a card, the Kobe Bryant base on quick, the quick dribble style, the pro two, like Zion, in my opinion, easily the best card in the game. Still, he has not been topped, and it's going to be hard to top a card like this. And then lastly, we have Dark Matter Will Chamberlain, who I view as better than Kareem Abdul-Jabbar on a base version. I think that a fully badged up, you know, um, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar with like the Phil Jackson and all that sort of stuff definitely would be better than Will. But as a base version, Will Chamberlain being seven foot one with an eight foot wingspan, um, jump shot 17 or set shot 17 on very quick actually being a pretty nice jumper and then already coming with hall of fame reigning center catch and shoot and that sort of stuff i think puts will just a little bit above kareem at least in my opinion you could differ that's fine i get it i understand it's a very subjective uh, kind of thing that we're doing here ranking all of the best cards in the game but i just like the fact that will chamberlain just slightly nudges out in some stats slightly nudges out in a few or by a few i mean quite a few actually badges as well and just has just as good of tendencies, if not a little bit better, with um, pretty equal animations. So for me, Wilt is going up there in the top section. Let me know what you guys think about the list down in the comment section below. Personally, I think this is a pretty decent, but let me know where you guys are going to rank all of these guys. Remember, there's some very tiny, tiny differences, and there's certain cards that you definitely could differ on based off of what version of 2K you're playing. Like current gen, again, Damar is going to be in the top 10 section versus Trace McGrady being down at the top 10 to 20, or you could rank them both equal if you want to mix both, but whatever it is, let me know. Again, this is a way too early list in like a month, maybe at the end of April, we can do a full concisive list of all the dark matters. We have a lot of really great cards in here. So let me know what you guys think. I like the video you guys did enjoy. Subscribe if you guys are new. We are on the road to 10K subscribers. Hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see y'all in the next video.